So, any guesses as to what map we're playing, boys? We did the map bans like an hour ago, or like 46 minutes ago. What map is PSG Town going to today? First game, we did Nighthaven Lab. Not some basic bitch Oregon bullshit, you know, like every other team would probably go for. We big dicked it. What are we doing today? Now, maybe now we're doing boring shit with Oregon. I don't know. Consulate. So the back to back new maps, yeah? Setting a statement. Map bans, boys. PSG talent versus B and A. They ban Chalet, we ban Cafe, they ban Skyscraper, we ban Consulate. No Consulate. You guys were guessing for it. Chalet is gone as well. No Chalet, you guys guessed that too. Bank band, Border band, which leaves what? Oregon, Nighthaven Lab, and. One, two, three, four, five, six. What is the third map that's missing? Top house. We're playing laps, baby. We're going back to back laps. Back to back. So last week it was between Oregon and Lap. This week it was between Oregon and Lap. This time we banned Oregon. Last time the enemy banned Oregon. Which means this time we start attack. Last time we started defense. Now, we won 7-0 last time. We only showed a single round of attack. We won it flawlessly. All five alive. This time, we're starting attack. Going 6-0 to attack on Nighthaven Lab. I'm going to take everybody out for a dinner if that happens. Because that is unheard of. So, uh, probably not going to happen. So, we might need to show some actual strats today. <laughs> it, might, it might be needed. It might be. You're liking the 7-1 call, Flynn. See, I'm thinking 7-3, 7-4. That's where I was at, you know, logically speaking. But we can take a 7-1. We can, we can go for it. We, uh, we warmed up on this map, uh, like, while I was playing quick match. I don't know the exact score. Not that it matters, because you're just warming up, but... We, uh, we were warming up on this map as well, so we're, we're so ready. We actually, uh... We actually called that we were gonna play this map last night. Like, we finished our game, and we were like, okay, we're probably gonna play Nighthaven Lab again tomorrow. And we did. So, like, our, our prep work for this has been good. Like, we pretty much knew that it was going to be a bit of very high likelihood Nighthaven Lab again. So, this was not a surprise to us. It could have been to our enemy. We don't know. Uh, these are the defensive win rates, which is based off 16 rounds. It was played twice yesterday, I believe. We had seven rounds, so... Surely that was the two games yesterday, yeah. Oh my god. I yeah, that's okay. yesterday. BNA left laps open, although they lost yesterday 7-2. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's the fun thing about map bans, right? Because it's a mind game. It's like, they saw us win 7-0, so do we want to hide it now and not show more strats? Do they think that their, that their loss yesterday was a fluke? Like, they should have done better? That maybe that maybe they think that the way that we play Nighthaven Lab, like, do we, they can beat us. Maybe they saw our Nighthaven Lab game was like, this is easy to beat. We're going to play this operator. We're going to go over here. We're going to counter. Maybe they have studied our game and it's now counter strutting us to death. But the thing is, because we won 7-0, again, we only showed one attacking round. So we, we have a whole attacking side that the enemy cannot prepare for. So going off of that, I feel like going Nighthaven Lab against us back to back like this seems like a bold move. Because they can't counter shred our attacks. Only our defenses. And who's not to say we got more defensive side strats? No one knows. Um, so it's exciting. It's pretty exciting, actually. We all can also see if we suck on the map, or if we just, like, BST just sucked, you know? It's just very skewed by the top two. No, I helped Fabian with some coaching stuff as well, but he's the main guy. Fabian is the coach. I am, like, quote-unquote assistant coach right now. I do a lot of the... Like, I get coffees, right? We have a bunch of do documents, like a Google Power Slide... PowerPoint slides. Um, I do a lot of. I do some data there. I do some. I did some stuff with like drone positions, operators. Like we've done. I do like some data entry and fine detailing. And Fabian is like the overarching kind of coaching, both like game strategy, mentality, environment, and then we bounce ideas off each other because obviously we both speak English. The players don't really that well. So it's hard for Fabian to bounce ideas off them. So we try and bounce ideas off each other instead. Um, but my main role here is content creator. We start attack, by the way. We're not starting defense. We are starting on the harder side. Operator bends. Uh, 
We banned Monty, we banned Solus, okay. they banned Maverick, and they banned Asami. I don't blame you. Monty ban is probably so this is very different than massively. yesterday, if memory serves me right, but I don't fucking remember entirely, actually. I actually don't remember yesterday's bans at all. I had written down somewhere, but uh... Yeah, I mean, like, we, we've ran into Solus was banned yesterday as well. Uh, that much I know. As well. Maverick was banned yesterday as well by us, actually. So we banned Monty the now, we banned Maverick yesterday. I forgot what the enemy banned, frankly. You know anything about Pro League on console? There is no Pro League on console. And as far as I know, there won't be. The reason being is that uh, Microsoft or Sony, Xbox or PlayStation, would have to fund it. That's what they did back in the day. It's like a partnership with Microsoft or Sony. So they want to Al Qaeda. Well, they can do whatever they want, but basically, when you see a Maverick ban on defense and you play defense, you probably want to play like Tuberu, Kaid, Mute, Bandit. Like two of those four operators or three of those four operators. BNA right now are playing Mute and Tuberu, which means they can deny the wall in terms of time. They, they can burn time on the clock, but they cannot deny hot breaching. Only Kaid and Bandit can do that. So we will be starved out of time here trying to get the walls opened up on the attack, but we will get the wall open regardless. There's no denying of the breach. Um, they are playing 3c4, so that's of course a scary point if you go vertically, for example, or if they go below the Valkyrie camps. C4 spawn peak. I'm going to be completely honest here and say that uh, we died to this in scrims very early on, and I told the players, if you go on this window, you can kill the guy. Now, Roy did miss the shot, but he gets some damage, he shoots a C4, we get a win here. But the very first day we scrimmed Nighthaven Lab, we literally died to that spawn peak, and it was Roy who died to it. And I was like, Roy, if you do this instead, you're not going to die to C4, sometimes. So, huge. <laughs> now, you don't want to do it every single round, because then it's predictable, but sometimes you just want to check for it that way. Small things, right? Small things. Usually they ban from Math Ying. Oh, they banned Ying, yeah. So Ying Finrear. So this wall will get opened up the second this two barrel canister ends. We exothermic charge the wall. It almost got popped. Then the freeze happens. When the freeze disappears, there we go. Wall is open. So now Bino playing catwalk. If we can kill him easily, we get a lot of value now. Bottom garage catwalk can go up Flores. Riders in the Dawn Sophia. This basically means catwalk is unretakeable from the enemy. So now we have catwalk control for the rest of the round, unless they make a crazy fucking play. So, pretty good start. Find the Valkam. They're in. Misa got MVP in our game yesterday. He had like a plus 8. I think he went like fucking 13 and something. Or like he got like... He got double digit kills, I'm pretty sure. He played really, really well. He found so many gaps. We lost Roy Boy to a jump out on the window. A little bit of cheeky aggression here. Kai goes down. That was a guy that was roaming down below. He's injured under the fish stairs. They ying off the door. They push through. They confirm the kill. So we're going two fish, two breach, maybe? I'm trying to see the outlines. Oh, two, two fish, one aqua, one breach. So we're attacking from a lot of angles right now. Riders cutting off the side. The flank comes through while nearsighted. Soldier hits the one taps pre fire. 1v3, Candela, Flashbang, but both Rider and Soldier are low on HP, so Duke can clutch this out. I'm gonna call him Duke. Duke Mani or Duke? We know there's no C4 here, because Roy shot it earlier, and Rider confirms the round. First attack continues, we are 8-0 for the season. Not yet lost a round on attack. It's our second attack in round, but still. Rider life round, you did call it. It's more like Diok. Or it's Diok? Diok? Because, like, as an English speaking person, Dukmani, right? Dukmani, like, makes sense, like, logically. So, Diok? Diok, Diok Mani. Diok Mani? Me says a he? Yeah, I know he's cute, but he's a he. He's very cute. We should have Fabian ready to, like, stream in case I die, you know? Wall gets opened up again. Catwalk progression. Blitz is in. DMR behind. Yellow pin comes out. Flashbang goes through. Blitz gets the DS skill. Soldier with a big opening here in the round. Catwalk control again surrendered by the defense. First step succession. I will say BNA. They're not denying that wall very well. It gets opened up literally in 40 seconds into the round with us running from spawn. They're playing Mute Tuberau. But the wall gets opened immediately, so the two brow doesn't do jack all in these rounds, and he dies right after every time. 
Oren, Roy should probably not swing that because he has to breach the wall first. Nate goes off a cover. For some reason, we're not breaching the wall. There we go. Now we're breaching the wall. Roy has to now either pop it and get back or risk it. He risks it. Oh, see, that's the issue. If you don't pop the wall first and then run away, if you die in the run back, the wall will not be open. So, again, small details, right? You gotta pop the exothermic, then start running. Or you pop the exothermic and you don't run, but you go elsewhere. Because now, the wall will not get opened up. Kai's position is very much strong. The MPs was wasted. We push side with Blitz plus two players. So there's Goyo Fire, Impact Grenades, and a really good setup here from DNA. The pushing through Fish is just not gonna work. Unless you made some crazy fucking shots. So now we rotate again, it seems like. Soldier died on Blitz. Go back to Garage Catwalk. Misa for the flank. Ryder's gonna go into Connector. We see the shoulder. That's a free pick. Don't swing the fire. Misa! Hello! There's fire in the door. There's no follow-up. No trade can happen. The zero losses, not even lap, could be ending right here. This could be the moment. It's 2v2. It's anyone's round. Two smokes on Ryder can cut off a rotate here to isolate targets. One versus one. One smoke goes out. JLT's gotta pop off here. Enter in through. Fight the guy pillar. Isolate the target. Get the trade. Yes, one for one. Ten seconds. They know he's on the right hand side, but they're nowhere. We're guessing chassis. JLT with the pre fire. He's prone. Pistol out. Woo! And the streak continues. Look at this. The yellow ping was on the wrong side of the chassis. It actually wasn't. It was right fucking on him. Perfect. And despite the one not getting opened up, despite the Blitz dying, despite Misa fucking up, despite Roy dying to a C4, we conquer the moment, and we seize the opportunity, and we take another round. Now, surely, I don't speak Korean, is this the same bombsite? It can't be, right? They're playing Lee now, and it says for the shield counters. It is a different bombsite indeed. Nice. <laughs> Good heavens, we're going basement. So what are they changing? They're playing Wamai, and they're playing Fenrir, and they're playing Lishin, yeah? The rest is the same? Or is there just, yeah, Valkyrie Tuparau? So again, Tuparau with no Bandicite and no Mute this time. And you have single wall and double wall. So let's say he's tricking double wall. You go single, you breach that, you go double, you breach it after. Obviously, you can also vertical clear. Uh, we have Ram now, we have Jackal, we have Blitz, so this this looks like a roam clear, right? Blitz, roam clear, Ram for the verticality after roam clear, Jackal for verticality and roam clear. Oh, back to Buck. Still can be roam clear, of course, still could be as well. A lot of roam clear operators here. What do you think of Deimos? Deimos is kind of, what I would say, a, f a situational operator. Oh, we got Spompy. He ran out the breach with a madman. We lost Ryder on Buck. Honestly, probably the second best operator to get spawn peaked. It's between him and Ram. Losing Blitz would, I would argue, make life a little bit harder. Losing Dokebi, we lose a lot of power in that. Losing Roy is like the primary hard breach. Losing Buck or Ram is best case scenario. It's still not great playing 4v5, but for what happened, it could be worse. What up, Tom J? Was a very sort of well Hello, good sir. Approach towards getting that opening kill. They always had at least nice mirror wall. Love to tweet a whole mood. <laughs> There's no quarantine for new operators in play. Deimos is uh, in play right now. Uh, you can play him, you can ban him, you can. He's also played in scrims sometimes. He's, he's not like a Sami Finrir that's played every round, but Deimos has seen play from what I've seen. Stream died there for a second. <laughs> um, doing well, Sherlock. I saw you, I think you were co streaming NL last night, also waiting, right? We had the server issue, waited for like two hours. JC was co streaming, I think you were co streaming, Super was co streaming. Everyone's just sitting there waiting, being like, are we gonna watch anything today or not? So, when did you make Jackal's ability like Deimos that only Jackal sees the pain? Uh, I actually think that you would almost have to do that, yeah. But then it's like, then there's no difference between them. Not really. But it's just interesting because Jackal seems stronger than Deimos in a lot of ways. But Deimos is a newer operator. And normally newer operators are stronger because power creep. So it's very unique how Deimos is like a weaker Jackal. It's a different Jackal, not a weaker one per se. But seemingly weaker, especially for like the more casual oriented players. 
So we have exo control. We're popping the hatch, popping the walls. One person's flanking. The flank could be really huge here. Like if we get flanked, not good. Misa, opening killer. C4 goes. Yeah, this is C4. It looked like a smoke for a second. We can plant now. Unless it's a good cancel the wall. Do we have the exterior wall opened up? I don't think we do. We're kind of missing the exterior wall for the crossfires. Oh, we're trying to get it now. Now the issue is Tubarrow is actually really fucking strong. Oh, does Roy find a gap? Is there a gap in the wall? Yes, there is. Wall is open. Now if Bino dies in this corner, the plant can commence. He dies. Soldier can walk in with the blitz. Establish a plant. Only lo lose condition now. C4 Hannah. Roy loses the gunfight or a big flank from BNA. Bomb goes down. C4, not successful. Roy peels off. Plays post plan safely. Guilty shots on the flank. This is a lock and key situation. There is no way back here for BNA in this round. We got Vert. We got outside. They're both low on HP. C4 whiff, whiffs. Misses. I was trying to say both things. It is for sure over. There it is. Okay, there it is. <laughs> the undefeated streak continues. Really good problem solving there, I will say. Really fucking good problem solving. I was afraid that we wouldn't go outside to breach the wall on the exterior. And then we would have to like gamble the 50-50s. But Roy rotates and Roy's like, I think the bottom right corner I can breach. The freeze doesn't reach. He fucking got it. That's fucking huge. That's actually fucking huge. If that wall didn't get opened up, there's a very high chance we lose that round. There were 10 on laps so far. 10 on laps. Three attack. Well, 11, no? We won 7 0 and then three. So, 10. Or four attacks. We're 6 0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four attacks. 10 0. Yeah, we boot camp with Talon for eight days. And. Let's just say they've never played Nighthaven 11 Pro League before we joined the team. So, <laughs> it was a lot of like, okay, what the fuck do we do on this map, you know? Because uh, in stage 2, so last year, last time they played in Korea, uh, Talon banned Nighthaven Lab four games in a row in playoffs. Or in knockout stage. In best of threes. So, they might have played it maybe once in the best of one scenario, but in, in a later series that matters a lot, they banned it every single time. So they're not super familiar with Nighthaven Lab. We had to teach them uh, from the ground up, basically. It's going to be very exciting to see Phyrex and D plus games against PSG, because that's like the quote unquote best teams, supposedly. Like, the only games that truly matter, assuming that we play well, is Phyrex and Damwon. If we beat one or both of those, we put ourselves in a really good spot for the Major, like, to qualify. Obviously, we have to beat every other team as well, but unless some of the teams are playing really well that we don't expect... Ooh, great shot from Hannah. Uh, Phyrex and Damwon should decide most things. But there's no, uh, no letting go of the breaks. Like, BNA, BSG yesterday... They are opponents that we prep for just as much as Phyrex. We scrim against, like we scrim for them, we prep the maps, etc. Like we pay the respects that they deserve. We don't see BNA as a weak team. We go, we don't know how good they are. Frankly, we have no fucking idea. So we go into this being like these guys might be Phyrex, they might be Dumbo. It doesn't matter. Good trading kitchen, but because we lost the player early to Hannah, we are a man down. We've lost. Buck, and we lost the IQ, but we got the Dokubi cams hacked, so the IQ doesn't matter, we know the Valk cams are. We got Ram on GLT for vertical play, but this round is strategically very difficult for us. We need to hit a shot here. Like, we actually need two kills. We have no time. I don't think Roy can necessarily run outside and breach the wall and he like, fucking skeets for it. So, we literally just need to hit some crazy shots this round. Or uh, we will have our first loss. There's not a lot of strategical win conditions here. Now, is there a jam on the wall? Thankfully not. And there is no two brow. So, wall gets opened. Same corner. Different player. Not Bino. This time, Kai. Bino is instead holding the cross. We didn't pop the wall. So, we're going... Why didn't we pop the wall? Are we rotating? Oh, okay. We have a spare exothermic. 
15 seconds. They don't really have to this is not good. No diffuser, by the way. Oh boy, this is bad. Everybody, close your eyes. The inevitable doom comes here. Wait, hold. Ah, oh, it's close. Ish. No time, no diffuser. Didn't get the wall. No win condition here. There's a jammer. Yeah, but we can shoot the jammer from the vertical play right above where we have control. You know? We can even shoot the jammer on the right hand side, probably from the door. Worst case. Yeah. Like the jammer shouldn't stop you there. Now, BNA will call a tactical timeout. I believe that is. It is orange. It says BNA, so it's not us. So they call a timeout despite winning. Maybe to talk about bombsite priority, what things to change, try and get like a 3 3 half. Because, like, if you're, if you're BNA right now, you need the next two rounds. Like, really fucking badly. If not, you're up against the. Uh, what looks like a near impossible situation, essentially. Both Fabian and myself are in our respected home countries. Fabian is not in Korea, nor am I. We boot camped there for eight days. We got back the 12th. Um, we might boot camp there once a season, something like that. But uh, we're not living in Korea or staying there long term. What about as a major? Same thing. Language barrier. Dong will li most likely be the person behind the team. Also because we don't speak Korean. Even if the players spoke perfect English, Fabian doesn't understand the players' communication. If they're fighting, if they're angry, if they're disappointed, if they're sad, if, they, if they're struggling. Like, we don't know. Like, we can read their body language. We can uh, assume what's happening. But you can't take a time out and ask questions. Hey guys, are you mad? Oh, if you're mad, you should think about this. It's like you need to take those 45 seconds of fucking blast their ass with the with the solutions right so most likely the way that it's probably gonna play out is that dongook will take all the tactical timeouts behind the players um or i don't know again like we haven't really had this kind of translation thing before so i don't know exactly how it works but that's what we imagine will, will happen we did speak about us taking some korean lessons them taking some english lessons but uh even then it's like that's a long way to learn Korean, you know, for Fabian. No, we didn't do it for the money, Papian. It's more like opportunities. We did try and coach a North American team, actually. Um, but that didn't end up panning out. And then, last second, Talon was like, Yo, what about us? We're like, long-term project? Different region? Like, a fun, creative process where we gotta coach differently and do things differently? That could be a very fun challenge. Because, like, we probably could make more money coaching a North American European team. That's possible. Like, there's more funding in those regions. There's more viewership in those regions. So, I certainly wouldn't say that we did this for the money. Talent is taking good care of us. We don't have a bad contract by any means. It's, I would say it's very fair for both parties. But uh, we probably could make more if we didn't go to Korea. If there's a spot elsewhere, that is, of course. But Talon's, are, they're very nice to work with. Very, very kind people. Which matters a lot as well. Especially when you're as experienced in Fabian and I, you do care about who you work with. Not just the winning, not just the money. You want, like, to win, you want to have a good salary, and you want to be having, like, a nice relationship with your colleagues. Like, that, all that matters. Like, definitely. We've been through enough bullshit to be like, yeah, this, this guy's a dickhead, he's fucking gone. Our boss fucking sucks, we don't want to work anymore. We've been through all that before. Talon is not like that. Great push there. Candela, not no trade needed. Soldier just cleans up shop. Bino now, 0-4. Is this the PSG effect? No. I was gonna say Crazy Boy went 0 7 last time with a 0, 0.00 rating. Bino. It looked like we might follow that same pattern of shutting him down as well, but he gets a shotgun kill with 1 HP left. No 7 0 for him. But we do take the round. Also, Tate and Bino didn't die last round, I don't believe, so it would have been a series 6 of anything. I mean, what a return to Can I say what in a team? No. No leaks. There were two things that happened. I was very close to being a player in EUL, and then I was semi close to coaching an North American team. Um, or like, same role as here, like assistant coach slash content creation. But both things kind of fell apart. Uh, I mean, the thing is, the offseason was so short, you didn't really have time to actually do anything correctly. Like, we literally spoke to Talon on like a Friday, and then on a Tuesday, we flew to Korea. It was that quickly, like it literally, out of nowhere. And we had to. The roster lock was closing, 
we had to talk contracts we had we had to boot camp with the players like get them up to speed so we literally went to korea without a contract we spoke to talent and was like yo this looks like a fun thing and we spoke like maybe like loose numbers like expectations of salary and workload like what we envision what they envision but we literally flew to korea without having signed a contract with talent and we signed the contract in person in korea like at the end of the boot camp like we were both so committed like from fabian and i's position and talent's position and the players obviously they said that they would like to work with us but they're they're also like nervous about like language barrier and everything else so we all got to feel each other out and be like is this a safe space can we all work in this environment and then we found out during the boot camp yes we can um we get spawn peaked again sort of this time it's roy hot breach but we have right on a so like this huge back up here first time playing double hot breach as well i believe like properly no i'm happy i didn't end up playing i think playing would have been the wrong thing for me so before si i was super like I, I felt like casting wasn't really going well for me i didn't like it didn't click i didn't feel fulfilled um i didn't really feel like that was where i was supposed to be in my life so i was like desperately being like okay shit, playing is fun that's what i'm good at i guess i should go back and then i realized during si thankfully that i do like casting i do think that it's where where i can do a good job and uh I think I did my best casting work at SI in my career so far. Uh, and, and Parker's like super excited to work together, uh, SMI. So SI kind of changed my mind on things. And I was pretty happy with not playing or being uh, a part of a team. But then this talent opportunity came along with Fabian and I was like, that sounds really fun. And it has been really fun so far. Just like being a part of a team essentially. Like the bootcamp was so fun for me. Uh, it was like 16 hour work days, 7 days straight. 7 a.m. till midnight basically every single morning but uh no regrets it was fucking fantastic now enemy they fell back and reinforced connector but that means is this wall open or not i can't tell is there a rotate here on catwalk yeah so they reinforced off connector with the spare reinforcement but they don't have two spares so now they have a rotate on catwalk and we've never attacked connector really before so i feel like bna might have uh, miscalculated the reinforcement there we have Mesa smokes, we have soldier smokes, we can smoke off line of sights and make that push. 2c4 is available, of course a warden who's low on HP now. Oh, we don't have catwalk player, no Mesa! That's tough. If we kill warden there, it opens things up really well for us. Now we're kind of locked out. Where is, uh, where's Ryder? Where's, oh. Okay, there's Ryder. 9 and 4, by the way. No smokes now. We gotta go guns blazing. We know where one player is now. Shotgun swing is too strong for us to handle. The LT for the 1v2, but the favorite gadget is there. Nearsightedness, hard to work against. No EMP, sadly. And this is where you wish you had breaching charges, not Claymores. Well, they have a really good crossfire here. The second that Rooney swings, so is the mute, but they don't actually hold the cross correctly. Nearsightedness, and it's over. Good try, though. We've never really attacked Connector before. You've only shown one attack. We've only needed to show one attack. It's fucking working. Like, if Misa doesn't die while on camps on Catwalk Raptors that round, Warden probably dies. Blitz stays alive with smoke grenades, and there's no Warden. We probably win that round, right? We don't need to go Connector. We can fucking brute force go 4 2. Bang, bang, bang. Hide strats for future. Easy clap. Into a fighting position. Like 4 2 not even up attack is great. It really is. Like, they, 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 it could have been a 5 0, a 5 1, it could have been a 6 0, generally speaking. It very well could have been. Um, 4 2 is just fine. I'm not in contact with anybody from the past with really, Ifidori. I talked to Shaz a little bit and I talked to Fabian. And that's it. I think. Goga, I think we talk like once a year. Just like happy birthdays and such. Spoke to Goga recently. We we're fucking around with him. We're like, Goga, come play with us. We're like, let's make a team, Goga. For, you know, just fucking around. And Goga was like, bro, I don't, I don't fucking play this game anymore. I'm like, <laughs> none of us really do. Besides me, I guess. So I think mechanically speaking, PhD can stand up against UNA. No. Not uh, not one to one. Not at least not the top teams. That's for sure. 
Korea is not as mechanically strong as like Japan, for example. Japan is a lot stronger mechanically. Uh, I of course that's we're, we're trying to work on that. We're trying to improve on that. And I think just like when a team has strong foundations and crossfires and understanding of the game, your aim won't necessarily improve, but your performance in terms of aiming and positioning will get you better and more kills. So the plan is of course to work on that. Work on every aspect of the game. Oh, we, we missed the uh, we missed the two barrel canister. Unlucky soldier. Oh, isn't there a guy here? Yep. Soldier's dead. There's. Oh no! Hannah, good night. He had no idea that IQ was there. Zero clue. He has smoked the enemy though. Now we have bandit tricking. Can we see what's happening here? Misa. No bandit batteries left in pocket. C4 below. Soldier goes big for two. No Valkyrie even. We have still, what, two C4s left as well? JLT's advanced here. Roy gets a shotgun kill. Uh, they're locked out. They are so locked out. The one guy's going fish, it looks like. And then we got JLT. Three shotgun kills in the round. Flawless. Now, if Soldier didn't uh, get the kill on IQ, he wouldn't have gotten the C4 kill. We would have played f uh, 4 versus 5. Instead, it was 5 versus 3. So, Soldier really altered the outcome of that round single handedly off like a really fucking ridiculous gunfight. But that happens sometimes. Strategically, we did a good job at denying them the breach and stalling for time. But had they dealt with the breach and gotten the kill on Soldier, that round could have been very different. Day two, game one. Warden using Sketchy to hold down Jesus stairs. You'd love to see it. <laughs> Jesus stairs. Uh, we call them Aqua or Fish stairs, but we, we, we can call them Jesus stairs. Yeah, so. Oh! Guys, are you seeing what I'm seeing? We're playing Cavera. Now, maybe I should DM Soldier right now and say, What are you doing, my guy? We're not supposed to disrespect opponents in the second play day. It's not supposed to happen this way. Now, I don't think he's been spotted yet. He was hiding. I think he's still hiding, actually. Obviously, when you play Kavera or like Kai, like you want to hide an operator. You just sit in the corner. You don't do reinforcements. And then you, when the round starts and people are off camps, then you sprint somewhere else, like where you want to play at. So, Soldier's going to try and play Kavera. There's no Jackal, There's, there is a Dokubi though, Dokubi could be a problem here. And of course if they drone him out, also problematic. The Soldier has to kind of play, for like far away in Narnia, go for like a late round flank here or something like that. Cause like, let's say Kibera is supposed to die this round, you just need to burn time. Right now they don't know, I believe there's a like Kibera. Once they find out there's a Kibera, it'll happen one or two ways. Either they find her on a drone, and they're like, fuck, they have Kibera. Like, be careful. Or we will flank with Kibera, and they will go, fuck, there's a Kibera. Now, Ryder falls early in the round. Not great. He was on the extended roam as well. As was JLT, who's now currently falling back, I believe, in the outlines. But when Ryder dies like this, it probably indicates often that, oh, the roam is clear. There are no roamers top floor. But Soldier is still activated here. Now, our win condition, because we lost Ryder, kind of relies on Soldier getting a good flank. One or two kills on interrogation, or really like late round chaos on the flank. So now it's about timing. If you flank too early, you will die and not get the full value. If you flank too late, they're gonna be on the bomb side and it's over. So it's a really fine dance right now. They're still droning top floor, he could still be spotted. They've also hacked the Dokubi cams. So if they spot him on a default defender cam, for example, also bad. So I don't know, I'm not sure where Soldier is right now. We haven't seen him in a while. But of course, we're excitedly waiting to see what happens. C4 is prepped, primed, and ready. So like now, it's about the flank time. If you flank now and get a kill, they're gonna be worried about the back and the front. So like the next 20 seconds, we should get a kill coming through here. Goo mines, gives away some locations, no more phone calls either. So they have to speed up here a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, has to speed up a little bit. 45. Main breach open, vert destruction happening on site. Gadget activated, he's gonna make his move now. Either flank garage, hold the oh, this is so late. 
Come on, soldier. Go, 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 go. They're going to hit the sights. Oh, no. They're holding this. No. Oh, he's flanking the other way. Okay. No. Yeah, that, that way. No. Soldier, go. That could be an interrogation. That could be an interrogation. We're going to get interrogation. Oh, no. But the team killed. That's fair enough. Panic in the server. Team kill goes out. Plant 2v2. Cover is poor. JLT and Misa, where are you? Soldier dropped and no, it's clear. Swing comes to the flank and the kill. It was late in the round, but the chaos factor going for the interrogation. You can argue if he just gets the kill, the round is clean, but the interrogation makes everybody fucking panic, right? He's screaming, interrogation, interrogation, interrogation. And if they get interrogated, they guaranteed lose the round. They have to fucking sprint and floor bang when you go for floor bang from below, you will always hit your teammate before Kevera. So they guarantee they, they kill as well. Then he drops down the hatch for intel. And they know that there's nobody in EXO. They push a player behind the injured Kevera. Misa flanks from tank. And they get that two kills. It's huge. It's huge. But fuck me that flank was late. <laughs> like if the enemy was a bit faster, that wouldn't even have worked. Oh boy. I mean, it couldn't have been closer. I, <coughs> I kind of want to look back. Oh my god. And see how close the kit was to being confirmed. I love it. I love it. That far away. So 6 and 2. Looking mighty comfortable. Like playing Kevera in your second pro league game and it having like a, a arguably massive impact like that. It really is a showing sign of understanding of what's happening here. It really is. Calf kind of slept on. I mean, I made a tier list last night. I put Kivera in utter garbage. And then less than 12 hours later, like about 12 hours later, we uh, we picked Kivera in Pro League and we went around because of it. <laughs> Yeah, Soldier was everywhere. He started top floor, was first floor, back on top floor, went to kitchen, back on top floor, down fish stairs, went to stock, went to kitchen again, and then finally got the injure. He was literally trying to do the marathon worldwide. Trying to check every room before he got to his final destination. He's getting his daily steps in fun, yeah. Trying to stay fit and active. It's very important today's era you sit down a lot you play games get uh no don't oh, hold on no, 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 no. and even if this one goes away from them he says feeling a little bit too comfortable here doing a bit of trolling oh this might be a surprise if buck just swings this we don't know he's here we haven't really checked cameras this round we have pulse scanner but i don't think pulse is below us right now i think he's uh oh he is kind of below us so we know buck is there this could be a c4 kill soldier C Come on. Is gonna be Come on. Oh, I think he's scanning the wrong thing here. Of course, we could bait it for GLT. Let's see. Kai has a C4 prepped in his hands. We're gonna prep it with the pulse. GLT dies from the hatch? From the window. Don't mind. I feel like we definitely could have gotten a C4 kill that round, if not two. Buck was standing still for forever. Ace was standing still forever. I don't think they had downstairs prisms at the windows, so... Slightly misplayed here. Hannah with a great flank as well to backstab onto Ryder. Now it's a 2v5. It's the weakest round we've had so far. Soldier and War for the clutch. Gotta lash out and seek those openings. You cannot play your win condition on site anymore. 2c4, so we could get a kill each. Soldier has to read this timing correctly. As Hannah's in the hallway. Oh, we need to be lashing, we need to be reacting here. Like, we're, we're literally AFK. AFK fish, looking for a flank. You see, they're planting. Roy gets one. Oh, Roy gets two. Now, imagine Pulse had gotten the C4 kill earlier. 2v2 now. Out at the window. Where's the post plan here? I don't think the window is good for them. I don't think it's planned to fall. Can, can you defuse this by crouching and looking up? Yeah. So if Soldier holds the window. Wait, they're not there. Wait, they might just get this. 
Oh, Roy! Roy, God! God, Roy! Behind the cover! Soldier! Surely Soldier's here! Soldier! Yes! God, Roy. Roy got 2v5 retake from Fish Stairs. SMG12. That is huge. That is absolutely huge. Big dick is retake. Absolutely big dick is retake. There's no way. And I think the group chat is losing their mind. <laughs> oh no. Ah, that's huge. That is fucking huge. Roy's our like quote unquote support player. He plays Thermite, but when he has to do the fragging, he does the fragging. He is the Korean Bride. That's what he is right now. Or he is the Korean Roy, you know, one to one. We should never win a 2v5 retake, but we will absolutely take a 2v5 retake when it gets presented like that. Like, for how early this is, like, we've literally had eight days boot camp. We've had two days of scrims at home. One of them we weren't there for, Fabi and I, because we're traveling. So, like, we only had one day of scrims before Pro League at home. And while our enemies are, of course, like, not the best teams in the world, neither is PSG Talon. Like, I know some people look at this and go like, oh, Korea sucks. Like, how did they throw a 2v5? Or what the fuck are BNA doing? But we're a Korean team playing in Korea with five Korean players. We didn't import fucking Benjamast or Nesk or something like that, you know? Like, we literally have the same roster from last season, plus minus one player of Soldier who got loaned out. Uh, but the fundamentals, the, the, the counterplay, the adaptations, the small details, like, they're there. And they weren't there before. So, it looks... <laughs> I don't know what's happening today with Twitch, but the game is over anyway. Um, it looks very promising. It's a good start. It's a very good start. Just gonna congratulate the boys. Okay. I like that. That was way more exciting than yesterday's game. I feel like. Like, there were some, there were some clutches, there were some comics, there, some, there, there were some 2v2s. There were some 1v1s from like both teams here. Much like closer game. We also lost two rounds, which is uh, more than last time.